was Chuck Berry. And it's as simple as that. So I definitely saw evidence of how he invented the teenager. And secondly, he, he was 10 years older than the teenager. But he could write lyrics that related to how they were at that time. So, and he invented a few words that probably weren't in the Scrabble dictionary, but became, it came into the Scrabble dictionary. You know, um, uh, if you think of um, uh, the words uh, motivating um, over the hill, I mean, you know, those type of phrases that became well known to us and natural to us to hear, he invented those. Alice Cooper in the in the film talks about it, and you know he chuckled at the time he was being interviewed. It's just quite amazing. Um, now, um, he the things that I found out were that he lived um, definitely the wrong side of the track, and uh, he because his voice. Um, didn't sound black. A radio, the white radio stations played his music. And of course, when he turned up to do interviews or promotion or play a gig, people were quite taken aback that he was black. And um, he was appealing to white audiences before black audiences. And so he got a lot of jip and he got a lot of aggro. And eventually he uh, he dealt with that by just saying, well, that's me and I've had a hit record and, you know, I'm not trying to get a hit record so you can say what you want about me, but that's me, you know. And if you don't want me on your station or you don't want me on the TV station that you book me on, then fine, I'll leave. But he had already made his mark and that's what kept him together. And he became very aggressive. And his way was he'd been ripped off a lot of times. And that's where the aspect of I won't go on stage till I have my money and in cash and now. And promoters got very upset about it. And um, they still tried as it was in those days. I mean, black musicians were treated so badly, not being paid and hopeful to get any amount of money for the end of their show and promoters were seen running down the, the, the street and, uh, you know things like this in fact uh, that happened a lot to bb king and a lot to bb king's crowd the only way to stop that happening and making it really not affect you was to basically sort of look you know you're not going to get me back and i'm not going to play so give me my money and i i talked to bb uh, a lot about this and um, you know the racism there that having to stay in what they call black hotels and you know on their own and not go through the front door of the hotel where they were playing or whatever it is they had to go through the kitchens that feeling was still there and, uh, and is still there in certain parts not as vivid as those days but certainly it's still there the resentment so he said look I'll I, I just want to do th this is my rider this is my rider it's about 10 points do everything on that rider give me everything I require because your signature is at the bottom and you won't have any problems and one of the the most important things is money up front in cash in the currency of the US dollar and I can tell you a few European promoters that came unstuck on that one. And secondly, it had to have certain amps and only to perform his way. And if he didn't have the amp and the right amp, he fined the promoter $2,000. And so it went on and on and on. So eventually, if the promoter played according to the piece of paper, the contract, it wasn't as if he was requesting lobster in the dressing room. He wanted something to eat, a sandwich, whatever he might put down on that. And as long as the promoter stuck to his rider, everybody was happy. And he played his show and that was that. You start mucking him around, he'd play half the song and stop and start something else. You know, 
it, it was a weird situation. But he said, you play my way, we've agreed, and you won't ever have a problem. Now, um, I found out a lot of problems that they did have, even in the filmmaking days. I mean, you know, if you didn't have covered down in your contract exactly what he was doing, he'd be charging you for rehearsals. And so you had to be very careful. I found that quite alarming. But then on the other hand, I felt it was justified to a certain way. It got out of hand. It could never happen today because, you know, promoters would be able to, it's too dangerous to have that sort of cash uh, exchanging hands in the dressing room. I mean, it was doing enough in my day, let alone, alone today, because, you know, someone's, uh, someone would be after it. But, you know, that's what I found. I found him to be very awkward. And he flew the, flew the, the a little close. He flew the uh, sails a little close. He opened a club, which he knew was going to get shut down because it was the first mixed race club in St. Louis in, in um, you know, and, he, and the rope that they used to have down the middle where the blacks people would be one side of the rope and on the other side of the rope, the white people. He, if you watch his shows, and there's some examples in the, in the documentary of how he broke that down and the way he did was not by a pair of scissors or a knife or anything else what he did was keep walking up and down the stage and he'd go from one side of the audience to another side of the audience where basically they kept moving and before you knew what had happened everybody had mixed with everybody and the authorities who were there probably with you know four or five half a dozen basically policemen couldn't couldn't do anything about it so that went out the window and it was things like this and he loved to watch kids or the teenagers dancing so that's why he opened the club i found out that the stigma of his um problems with the the man act for instance it's it's so highly blown blown out of proportion you know he was black and he went to jail for it. Charlie Chaplin, who was on exactly the same charge, never went to jail for it. And, you know, if he'd been white, he probably would never have gone to jail. But there you've got this um, impression of a man that spent a lot of time in jail, fighting back and coming back and starting again, causing another problem. I, I think that the big problem that everybody has with Chuck Berry is they say fantastic rock and roller, poet, writer, performer, but somehow there's a seedy side to him. And that was caused and summed up by his wife, who'd been with him from the very beginning. Thometa's the only interview you will ever see from Thometa, I think, is in my film she, and she's never done one before she, she started doing one in hell hell rock and roll and chuck took the phone away from uh, the uh, microphone away from her and um but chuck i was making the film after chuck died husband set a picture of himself as being pretty dishonorable as a, a married person and you know, he brought a book out. He didn't tell his wife that the names of all the girls that he, you know, had had relationships to were in that that book. And she, of course, obviously found out. And and and, and, and I think people despise that. Look, if you're going to fool around and do that, then fine. At least tell the poor lady before she finds out on the front of the, the paper. But his attitude was that was me, and. She, she said, I'll sum up Chuck to you. Chuck was the name we gave him when Daddy went out on the road. But when Daddy came back from the road, he came in as Charles Berry, the father of this family, and was the greatest father he could ever want. When he left again, he became Chuck Berry. And that's all part of the, part of the razzmatazz. And that's how she lived with him on that basis. I don't know 
that people, especially in certain areas of America, liked that. And therefore they would elaborate on all sorts of things that they could do to try and bring his um, his name into disrepute. And that's what I found, really, after he's already written all these songs, we wouldn't have the Stones if we had had Chuck Berry, we wouldn't have the Beatles. And we might have done, there'd be very different bands. But he wrote those songs that turned the world upside down. And quite honestly, I don't think he deserved all the the, the the stick that he got. And he's still getting. I mean, there are some people that wouldn't even speak to me because of it. And, um, you know, I, I find it... Uh, a, a, a racism has come into uh, both making of three or four of my films. And uh, I, I find it very difficult to uh, uh, answer my own question of why, because I don't understand it. But there, an Englishman is completely different. You've been brought up and lived with that. It's shocking to us, but we go, well, why were we standing around when this was all happening? But, you know, I don't, but you'll find out that Chuck is loved as a rock and roller, as a songwriter, and, um, and, and part of that music scene and the early songs and but at the end of it start talking about his character they'll run him down we'll have more with john brewer right after this yeah you know i mean he then there was always that kind of stigma that he was he was he was tough but you can i can see kind of why he had to be because obviously um back then you know like you said that uh, they could easily be scammed. They could easily be, uh, you know, scammed out of money. And if you didn't, if you didn't hold your ground, then people will take advantage of you. And that's something that Barry and uh, a, a bunch of uh, black artists back then uh, were, you know, really inanimate and wanting to take care of their own business. And that was the, the the ones that were smart. They knew that, you know, that they could not trust some promoters or they could not trust the clubs or whatever. So it's kind of great. I mean, the writer thing kind of reminds me of what the late, late Eddie Van Halen did. Maybe he might got the idea from Chuck was, you know, in his writer, he put um, there'd be no brown M&Ms, you know, in the M&Ms in there. And that kind of told him that, you know, that things were going to be set up the way that he wanted to set up, that they were reading the writer exactly how he wants it. So I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie actually took that from Chuck, where he um, had that writer that said, OK, we only have, you know, there's certain things that I want on this list and make sure make sure that every single thing on this list is made and there'll be no problem. So I was very interested in that as well. And, um, you know, I'd almost say that Chuck in, in certain in certain aspects it was almost the Tupac of his day. Uh, as to the, um, you know, obviously a great poet came from the wrong side of the tracks, but was speaking for for a generation, you know. So it'd be interesting. It's kind of interesting to, to say the least that he um, had so much influence in terms of the music business as well. And uh, finally, on your point about the uh, about you know him being um, you know having having other other lovers on the road, as it were, you know that was rock and roll back in the day. I mean, there was no. There was no social media. You didn't know very much what was going on in terms of uh, what was going in, in somebody's daily life um, as well. So, you know, that, that, you know, that does, you know, that was what it was back in the day. Same thing with, with what you mentioned about, about the, um, you know, what was going on socially at that point. Um, you know, even parts here in the United States were kind of isolated from what was going on in, you know, what was going on in the South or what was going out east or whatever um so yeah it was a it was a very harrowing time and you know way different time than it is now you know when you think about 60 70 years later um where we're at right now so it's kind of interesting to see that kind of capsulization of what was and now what is what is now so it'll be it's interesting to say the least i'm really interested in kind of seeing what's going on with this documentary and all that as well which is going to be on dvd on november 6th hopefully we'll have some streaming platforms coming up for it as well um, and, um, you know, I mean, like I said, great to be able to have so many of these documentaries that are 
that are um, coming up from you as well. Uh, the BB the, the BB King documentary is currently out right now. Um, you've had several series um, that have been on BBC as well. So um, hopefully uh, BBC America will kind of. Pay-